Hey, I'm Kathy from Kathy Cooks and welcome back to my kitchen. I am making a super simple, easy holiday treat using boxed brownie mix. Now you can use any brownie mix you want and follow the package directions. Mine is quarter cup of water, third cup of oil, one egg. So that is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to make that brownie brittle that you see in the grocery stores right now that's super pricey and all it is basically is brownie jerky. It's just dried out thin brownies, right? So why can't I make this brownie jerky myself, put some peppermint, um, ground up peppermint sticks on it and have it a holiday treat and you'll be able to give it to your friends lickety split. So let's get going. Okay, brownie mix is in here. Now I just add my quarter cup water, my one egg. Have any of you guys noticed that you gotta watch the size of eggs these days at the grocery store? You know, um, with the prices of everything going up. Um, I just noticed that sometimes large eggs don't look so large anymore. So if you're noticing a recipe is different, um, things aren't turning out, uh, check the size of your eggs. I know you're like, oh, Kathy, shut up, but because I do get complaints, I talk too much. Did you know that? Yeah. Someone told me, quit your blathering, and I'm like, whatever, I talk a lot, get over it, or don't watch me, right? Okay, so let's get this all mixed up. Now, I'm not just gonna put the peppermint stick on top, I'm going to put some peppermint in my batter. We're gonna put about a eh, teaspoon, half teaspoon. I'll taste it and see, oops. Just had a blowout. Oh, it smells good. Okay, we got this beautiful dark batter, and I want to test to see if it's pepperminy enough. No. That was probably half a teaspoon. Now I probably went to a teaspoon. No measurement needed for the peppermint, guys. Just put it in there until it's enough. Okay, now I can smell it. Mmm, perfect. I want the flavor there, but I don't want it too sharp. We have our pan. You do not want to use the 8x8 or the 9x9 that the directions tell you to use, or 9x13. You want to use like, I call this a jelly roll, some people call it a cookie pan. You want to use your cookie pan with a little bit of sides on it. Put your, put some parchment down and put some spray on top and then we're just going to pour our batter on. So we want to pour it out and we want to spread it all along the edges. It's okay that it overlaps over here. It's going to matter what boxed brownies you bought because some are 9 by 13, some are 8 by 8. And so you're just going to have to feel it out as to when it's going to be pulled out of the oven. So we'll go through the process with this one. Just shake it, get it to spread a little bit more, move it around. Let's see how thin it is. Okay. So that's, looks like less than a quarter. Yeah, definitely less than a quarter inch. Just seeing if it's the same all the way around. Pretty much looks like it. The center is gonna take longer than the edges. We are gonna put this in the oven, starting at 325, and we're just going to watch it. I'm gonna have it in for 20 minutes, and I may turn it down and leave it in longer. I may turn off the oven and leave it in there until it cools. We're just gonna to have to see, because I'm experimenting here. I did not look at any other recipes. I'm just winging it, because this is what I do. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. Um, you can definitely see it's, it's baked. It's done to eat, but um, this just is not crispy. It's only been 15 minutes. We're gonna put it in and check it in five more. As we go on baking our brownies, we have our peppermint to discuss. Now, I ground up some peppermint in my food processor, some peppermint stick. I used six candy canes, and you can use the round ones too, whatever you want. Now, I didn't put these on right away because I don't want them to sink in or melt and then you not be able to see them or they kind of sometimes melt together and burn. And I didn't want that. So I'm not gonna put this on 
till probably right when I pull it out of the oven, it'll be hot. This will still be able to stick in there, but it won't um, get all crispy and uh, liquefy. So we have this that you can be doing as that's baking. Okay, we are at 20 minutes. Still, I'm not seeing the dried out look I'm looking for. It just looks like the top of a brownie. See right over here, it's starting to get like some little holes in it. That's the look I'm looking for. Okay, we are at the 30 minute mark and I wanna show you something. I wanna bring them out so my heat doesn't get all lost. Do you see how they have lost their sheen? Now look over here. This has that signature brownie, like shiny layer on top, but it is gone elsewhere. There's another little spot over there. But so it's lost its sheen and this is 30 minutes in. I think we're gonna give it maybe five more. All right, at the 35 minute mark, we're pulling it out. Now, I left my oven on because I want to show you something. Now, here we have it. It's very dull, very dull. Um, it's time to put on our crispy bits. Now, it is super humid here. Like, these have already completely gotten mushed together. So, um, this is, I just have to break it up. The humidity is going to also matter how quickly your brownie brittle gets hard. So it's hard to give you a temperature because if you live like where I do, where it's super humid, um, you know, sometimes you have to adjust recipes. And we're going to take your hands, a spoon, and just lightly press in. And I can tell by doing this, that this is gonna be, you know, crisp up. Now, to ensure that my beauty is super crispy, I'm gonna do a trick that I learned probably 40 years ago when I made these little meringues that had uh, mint chocolate chips in the middle, little meringue cookies. I'm going to turn my oven off. And right now it's set at 325, so I'm gonna turn it off. And then I'm gonna open it. With a little of that heat out, I'm gonna put this back in and it's gonna sit in there until the oven is cold. And it's gonna stay in there for probably an hour. And in that hour, it's gonna crisp up some more and turn into our brownie jerky. Not beef jerky, brownie brittle sounds better, but I just think it's kind of funny. Dry it out brownies, dry it out beef, jerky, right? Okay, so here we have our beautiful piece of work. Lovely. Okay, I'm just gonna break a little piece. Nice. It'll probably even break crisper once it's cool. Lovely. Ooh, so I see. Um, my chocolate chips in there. Okay, so here we have a good piece. Nice and crispy. Those are very crispy. Perfect. So this, this pliable stuff Either you can eat like this, that piece is crisp, or put your oven on, like just for like five minutes, get it warm, like to 200 degrees, and put this back in, and you're gonna be good. Thank you so much for watching Kathy Cooks For You. I hope you enjoyed this brownie brittle slash brownie jerky episode, and bon appetit.